Welcome back to part four of the Lightweight Linux Distro Series. If you haven't caught up on this series already, there's a link to the playlist in the description below. You can have a look at some of the other uh, desktops in this series. But the question we're trying to answer is, what do you sacrifice by running up-to-date Linux distros built for lighter weight hardware on older hardware? There's a lot of older hardware kicking around. It's really affordable. It can be very powerful for certain tasks, and it's just waiting to be repurposed with software that supports it. So today we're having a look at one of the recommendations that came to me, Linux Lite. It is yet another Ubuntu based distribution. I promise this is the last one. There's a reason that people use Ubuntu as a desktop base. The limitations that it does bring though are things like 64 bit only support. Uh, you get away from this problem by using a Debian base or Arch or literally anything else that has a wider hardware support. So last desktop in the series, that is based on Ubuntu Linux Lite. Let's see what can this one bring to the table out of the midweights Linux Mint XFCE, Zorin OS 16.1 Lite, and Linux Lite. All right, so there's actually a fair bit that I need to talk about with Linux Lite because this is a project I have not checked in with in many years. Back in the day, Linux Lite was an XFCE desktop bolted on top of an Ubuntu base. Well, the same is still true, but there have been many, many custom tools that have been added to Linux Lite over the years that uh, in my mind, it almost supersedes the need for a look into something like Linux Mint XFCE, which is kind of why I said that this was gonna be the last Ubuntu based light distribution I was gonna look at, because in my opinion, Linux Lite is what Linux Mint XFCE should be if it were actually actively developed and features were added to it that were helpful for a new user coming into Linux and wanting to utilize old hardware uh, for newer software. And so this is where Linux Lite's niche really lies. At least that's the impression that I'm getting. Their welcome screen, while relatively simple in design, has a surprising amount of functionality built into it. Things like installing the updates, installing your drivers, setting restore points through time shift, installing language support for your language, and flicking between the light or dark theme. So, then you have your support, which is actually more useful than what most distributions offer. Quick shout out to the help menu here, which uh, apart from its giant icons, uh, it's pretty simple and it's pretty idiot proof, which I kind of like. Um, it also does not rely on an internet connection, which is really helpful, even though it is an HTML uh, manual. So just worth pointing out. Obviously they do have links to their forums and also as another nice nod to possible new users, they actually have a lot of their system logs kind of customized so that if there is an error, for example, I had the uh, soft software updater uh, or the package updater indicator uh, kind of running twice accidentally. And so it couldn't start the second one and it was saying there's an error, here's the error on the error log, feel free to copy and paste this into the forums at Linux Lite's uh, forum site. So all of those are nice little quality of life touches that a new user would definitely appreciate. Another thing that points me to the fact that this is a great distro for new users, uh, especially coming over from Windows, is that their applications are all labeled by what they do and not by the weird open source names that we've given them. So for example, instead of saying catfish, we've just got file search, search the file system. And the same could be said for GIMP. We got image editor. It's named based on what it does, not on the random arbitrary name that we give it. Obviously a little bit of brand recognition helps here too. So Google Chrome swapping it out in, uh, instead of Firefox, like most uh, open source distributions do. There's obviously some licensing issues there or in terms of like open source purity, that kind of thing. But I think in the long run, it's a great quality of life choice because again, if you're a new user coming into a light uh, or wanting to use a light distribution to replace uh, Windows on aging hardware, then this is going to be a great drop-in replacement for that. All right, so the desktop itself is based, like I mentioned, off Ubuntu 22.04 LTS. At this point, we're at the 0.1 release of that. And uh, so that means, you know, you'll get the hardware enablement stack over the course of the two or five years that you might have this system installed. And conveniently, Linux Lite do offer uh, upgrades from service pack to service pack or from between series, I believe, although I'll need that confirmed in the comment section. When it comes to the overall desktop, you are using the uh, XFCE desktop and you're using the latest uh, 4.16.3, I believe. Now, while XFCE as a desktop has been fairly feature stable for a while now, uh, 
quality of life improvements and small performance upticks here and there are great to see. One of the biggest questions that I have, uh, I guess, underlining a lot of these light distributions is whether or not they will ever make the switch to, um, to Wayland. Obviously, there's no real reason for them to be switching to Wayland at this stage, um, but in the, over the course of time, as the display service stack continues to evolve, especially on the GTK side of things, it'd be interesting to see whether or not they adopt Wayland down the road. At the moment though, X server seems to do just fine. Memory usage on this sits around 500 meg cold boot, which isn't the most impressive when it comes to light distributions, but I have only given this two gig of RAM. Uh, it is eating up all of the CPU space that I can possibly throw at it, but you can see on boot here, we've got 86 tasks loaded up. So compared to other mid-weight distributions uh, like Zorin OS Lite and, uh, and even Linux Mint XFCE, this isn't too shabby at all. Other small touches like the terminal layout, the font scaling, the font rendering, even the font choice are all really nice to, to look at. It gives it a really simple kind of Spartan feel to it, but the default icon set gives it enough color pop that you're not absolutely bored to tears by looking at it, which is something that I could say and something a lot of people have said about Linux Mint, uh, both the main version and the XFCE version. So continuing on that theme of this is the desktop that Linux Mint XFCE should be if it were actually paying attention, I want to cover some of the custom tools that the Linux Lite team provide. So first of all, you're gonna notice that one of the easiest things to reach off the menu button is the settings panel. And once you get here, you've got a whole uh, section here with Lite branded little tools to help do certain things on your system. For example, things that are notoriously difficult to do on a lighter weight desktop, like setting up network shares. So once you jump into the little light network shares here, it will uh, make sure that Samba is up and running in the background and it will let you know about how you can set up seamless Samba file shares between Linux systems and Windows systems with a little bit of explanation along the way. If you are wanting to have a look at a curated list of uh, popular software, then again, Linux Lite has its own little custom tool here to give you a pretty simple rundown list of some of the popular software that you might want to install. Some of this you're gonna recognize coming over from the Windows world. And some of this is just stuff that is well known here in the open source world. So when it comes to things like OBS Studio or a password manager, or maybe the uh, Redshift, the nightlight sort of uh, display tweaking that can uh, limit the blue light or Zoom or Wine or webcam software or Firefox, Dropbox, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can select these and go ahead and install them from this little curated list. So again, uh, in going after their niche audience of new users who have all hardware, this is a great uh, this is a great way that they can just have a simple uh, list of software to choose from rather than being bamboozled by thousands of packages. Little tweaks like being able to tweak the login logout sounds and also the software sources for Linux Lights repositories. Obviously, uh, the main distribution runs off Ubuntu repositories and considering how worldwide the Ubuntu repositories are, you shouldn't have any issues there. But it's great to see once again that you can switch out your repository for something that might be a bit more local for you. The system report is a useful diagnostic tool if you are looking to uh, give information about your hardware in a troubleshooting process. So again, the, the Linux Lite team have really smoothed the on-ramp here for being able to help target uh, issues or bugs or whatever it might be in their system to try and help their users feel like they, they do actually have avenues of support here. Makes diagnostics a lot easier. And this is something that a lot of distributions uh, skimp on, like, like full heavyweight distributions skimp on the ability to report bugs in a streamlined fashion and also give diagnostic information about the system in a streamlined fashion. They've got a quick tweaks tool here to be able to uh, do some of the, I guess, common uh, maintenance type stuff or problem solves that you might need to do in the Linux world. Uh, things like if the um, boot up screen has changed because of a kernel update, or if you want to install better power management using TLP for laptops, or if you need to, uh, you know, remove recent items from the uh, from the main menu here, or you want to install or remove a particular kernel, fix Hibernate, suspend, all that kind of thing. Again, while these you might need to be careful of, they do give you a pretty fair warning up the top here that uh, which of these are safe and which ones are one that you probably need to be a little bit more careful about. 
They've got their own little custom widget here, which I'm guessing is like a custom little conky that they have set up that you can just enable or disable. And, uh, and you can also see it's highlighting the fact that the firewall is not enabled, which means that out of the box, they don't enable the firewall, but you can, uh, at least it's a nice little reminder to enable the firewall. So again, if you like staring at uh, what your system's up to, then great to see. While there are other little custom tools here, I feel like that covers the main ones. And again, really these little tools are designed to help iron out the bugs and uh, get rid of some of the shortfall between a fully featured desktop environment like KDE Plasma and be able to build some of that functionality back into a system that's built off XFCE. Now, as it is built off XFCE, you've got all the standards here in terms of the Thunar file manager and some mediocre display scaling, uh, but it is still possible to do display scaling. The success of this over multiple monitors, I'm not really sure about, but the overall desktop is going to behave pretty reliably and pretty predictably uh, because at the end of the day, XFCE is based off a desktop par paradigm that goes back 20 years at this point. The default software selection is uh, is fair enough. I kind of miss the days where there used to be a lightweight office suite that you could also use, things like Abbey Word and Genumeric and um, packages like that. But overall, the software selection, again, reflects a pretty standard use case uh, for most uh, for most people coming over from Windows. And I think that about wraps up what Linux Lite has to offer. Uh, so when it comes to overall performance with a eight core CPU from 2011 and with two gigabytes of RAM, which I understand is a bit of a paradox in terms of pairings, uh, this does feel quite nice. It is worth mentioning that while the software management can be managed through the light software tool and also through Synaptic Package Manager that's pre-installed, uh, at least to my knowledge, there's no sort of um, universal package uh, enabled here out of the box in terms of Flatpak or Snap or anything like that for better and for worse. So overall, Linux Lite is a very compelling package for the new user who's looking for a lightweight distribution to run on older hardware. I would definitely recommend it over Linux Mint XFCE because it takes a lot of the good stuff that Linux Mint uh, provide, things like system snapshots, things like a sensible XFCE layout and a streamlined Ubuntu base based on the long-term support release and adds useful tweaks to it that kind of make up the shortfall of functionality that a new user might feel migrating over to Linux Mint. There's also some really great uh, just small, uh, intentional, user-friendly tweaks that I really like uh, in Linux Lite. And it makes the distribution and the whole migrating to Linux process a lot more understandable for new users. And I think the value of that cannot be overstated. So let me know what your thoughts of this little gem are. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.